Dave here, how are you? Today is, let me check down there, the 5th of July, but for you guys in the States, it's Independence Day. Uh, I hope you've had a good week so far, and as promised in the chat, I have a special visitor. Some say that she's mine, she's not actually mine, give me a second, and I will get her. Hello. <laughs> Here we go. Now this is Baroness, and normally she'd do wiggly waggly tail, but this is the first time she's ever, ever, ever been in this workshop. So she's a little nervous. She's a bit camera shy. What I'll do is I will switch cameras, and I'm hoping she doesn't make a mess of herself here. I'll take her over here and see if you can see a close up. There she is. So this is Baroness. Uh, there you go, you gonna say hello? <laughs> She's too cute. I'll bring her back. And so there you go, you've had an introduction to her. And uh, I'll switch back the camera again. And I'll give her back to Dickie, because she's going to, uh, <laughs> she's looking going to go back. There you go. All right. So she's going to go back up to the house. And I'm just checking my shirt. <laughs> There's no residue from the pup. All right. Uh, now, you might also notice down the front here that I've got the, uh, yeah, oh, she's a snuggler. Uh, I've got Matt and uh, Stephen's name here. We did go out to the bunker, which is a place in Springwood, and I took photos and video and all that kind of stuff. Tried to find them on the phone, they disappeared. I have no idea why. Now, this was an establishment that was, you know, pretty well established. They were actually turning people away. So maybe I picked the wrong venue to go to. So I'm gonna look for another venue next week uh, that's struggling with the situation and I'll go and support them. Into the show. Now today we're also telling you the winner of this little guy here. So wait for that. I'll read out some, uh, some of the entries a little bit later on. But we're going to work on this guy here. Now this is my roll around lathe cabinet. You're not gonna see it too much at the moment because she has her around your paw, she sure does. Uh, because it's basically a hollow thing right the way through. I'm going to show you some video and some photos on the lead up to the construction of this one. All of the drawers, and there's a big pile of drawers at the back there, they're all labelled 1A, 1B, 1, uh, 2A, 2B and all that. So they'll be going, that's the A bank and this is the B bank over here. This has all been dominoed together, so I've got dominoes in a rebate as well. So you could say rebate in Australia and England, rabbit in the States. I don't know why, I don't ask me why, I don't make the words up, that's just how it happens. Uh, she is a little cutie. Anyway, so I have, I'm compiling video as she's growing because they grow up so quick and if you haven't taken a photo, you think, oh yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow. And next thing you know, they're a full-size dog, and whilst they're still a lovely animal, they're not as cute as when they were a pup. All right, here we go. I'm going to have a bit of a look down the side here. Now, someone has also lent me a stream deck, my cousin Rob, and uh, thanks for that, Rob. And I'm still trying to get my head around it, so it's just a matter of click, click, click from one thing to the next. But in the meantime, I'm using this system down here. All right, now I'm going to show you the, the, the draw mark out stuff, and I'm going to turn the sound off. On these videos I might be able to talk over a little bit. Let's have a look. Oh, it's just a picture of marking it out and what I've been doing now is I've used the speed square to hold the um, the draw slide in position while I mark it and uh, so you can see below I've got a pencil line there I did with the speed square then what I did was uh, put the squeeze, speed square squeeze back, speed square back on again push the slide up to it and that's when I marked it out. I found it was a lot easier to do it that way. Uh, now, this one I'm thinking is also another picture. This is, uh, this is where I'm actually putting the uh, Euro screws into the uh, draw slides onto the side panels, or the, I call them gables. And this is actually the center one. I know it isn't, it's the right one. Read the wrong thing. <laughs> Thing. and you'll notice it's on the Stanton bench and that little recess that I created there on purpose on the Stanton bench is to stop the screws rolling all over the place. Now this is a little bit of video and the, I've already got the rebate on. I'm going to turn the sound off on this one. Okay, so I've already got the rebate in the top 
and down the side and I've got the domino set to 15 millimeters. The melamine is actually 16 millimeters thick and I'm using the TSO Bigfoot to steady it so it doesn't roll around because it's very hard to keep the thing steady. Now I'm also using the cross stops on the domino and the pins on the front of the domino. And that's, this is all reference positioning. And this is probably the only part of the, video, of the uh, construction that I'm doing reference. And when I finish this part, what I'll do is I'll... Um, you can see the dominoes. I didn't work off any measurement marks. So this is the Bigfoot from above. And I've also got the Seneca uh, dummy plate, or whatever it's called. I think dock plate, sorry. The dock plate is 10 millimeters thick, which is really handy for when you're using the um, XL or the 700. Because what it does, it re you can reduce your depth by 10 millimeters and actually be able to work on small stuff. So that normally you, you bottom out at around 20 millimeters in thickness. So I needed to go down to um, 16 mil thick material and go to 8 millimeters on the setting. I could, because using the dock plate, which is 10 millimeters thick, changed everything around for me. The Domino 500, you don't have to do that, but I got the 700 thinking that I'd need it for bigger projects. And I have used it on bigger projects. Uh, now, the next thing we're going to go to is the top of the unit. Let me have a look. So this is marking it out with a speed square. Now, here I'm doing a line every 100 millimeters. So I've gone along first measured out 100 millimeters from one end. And I'm going to explain why I'm doing that instead of referencing. This one is all going to be uh, working on the narrow situation with the, uh, with the Domino 700. And I think I will be showing you, let me have a look here, I'll turn the sound off again. That's going to make it a bit easier. So I will be showing you as I go along the edge here, I am using the, the uh, Seneca dock plate, which is keeping it up high. See that? And it also stops the machine rolling around at all. It makes it very easy. I'm glad I've turned the sound off because otherwise you'd be copying the, the sound of the domino going. It's not a huge noise, but when, uh, when it's that close to the, the microphone or, or whichever camera I'm using, it, it can get noisy. So these are all at 100 millimeters, as I was saying, and the domino setting is tight. So when I drive the actual domino bit in, like the piece of wood, which is, um, I think it's beach, European beach, the, uh, it's, it's a nice snug fit, similar to a dowel. Now, why don't I use a dowel? Well, dowels aren't as strong. These dominoes have got a one ton snap factor, and also they do not rotate. And it's very easy to put them in. As you can see, I'm going along here. Just looking down through the top, there is a cursor on the, on the top of the domino that I'm looking down onto. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is get to here. And I've drawn lines down on the face. Now, this is the back of the unit that we're working on at the moment. And we'll be gluing this on today. Now, in this situation, I'm using the middle of the... Turn it off again, sorry. Turn the sound off. Uh, in this situation, I'm using the cursor on the center of the Domino Bigfoot. Well, that's actually the TSO products, Bigfoot. It's the big blue thing hanging down at the bottom. You're not going to see it right... At, well, you'll see it, but you won't see the color too much. It's the part of the Domino that's all the way to the base. When we get closer to the camera, it'll be a little bit more obvious about what I'm talking about. Now, in this setting, I'm still using measurement. The reason being, I have now got it on a loose fitting so that the, the arc on the domino's cutter is traveling further. Now, that is going to help me a lot. You can see the, see the cursor on it now as we're coming up to this last hole, lining it up. And if I was referencing, I would have had a hell of a time trying to see that they're all wider than the standard. If I'd reference off the previous one, uh, see all those dominoes are in now, and they're all nice and tight, the piece you put onto it, it's normally a good idea to make it a loose width fitting. It's the same thickness. They're all 5mm dominoes, so all the slots are still 5mm deep, but they're just, you know, uh, not as tight sideways, which allows me to uh, 
do the joint better. Now this is, as you can see, I've got, this is a, a dry fit and I've got the parts all being pushed together. This is very important. If you don't do a dry fit, you might end up with glue all over the place and one of the dominoes hasn't lined up quite as you wanted it to and you're in all sorts of strife. Best to do it dry to start and then you won't have as much, as much trouble. So here we are putting it together. That's the unit. And that, my friends, is where we are up to now. So I'm hoping that gave you enough background to where we're at. I'll grab the domino and I'll show you exactly what I mean on a couple of the things there. I'll take the cable off it. Okay, so this is the Bigfoot. Now this gives me a lot of stability when I'm pushing the machine up against a surface, a flat surface, so it won't rock around. If all I had was this little bit up the top here, you can see that could be an issue for me. The thing up the top here is the Seneca uh, dock plate for the XL. The Bigfoot will go on the 500 and the 700. So, you know, this is only for people that are interested in, in Domino stuff. You know, you, you have one already, that's great. Um, they Festool do sell, or so it comes with a small one of these. I just found this works a whole lot better. I've got the uh, cross stops on here. Now these have got pins that are spring loaded and it's as I'm going along the edge here, these are all notched at one millimeter. So this little lock here, I don't know if you can see it there, that little guy here, it locks in perfectly. There's also dovetailed onto the plate. But the main thing as I was saying with, on the side here, see I've got a long line and a short line. If I flick this lever there, it takes it to being pointing to the short line. Now that is going to give me a tight domino connection. Flicking it the other way is going to give me a loose domino connect connection. So there's a little white point down there that shows you. Um, okay, so that's, that's basically some of the stuff regarding a domino if you have one or if you want to get one. All right, and it is Independence Day today, of course, in the States. That's why I made comment at the beginning, 4th of July for you guys in the States. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is, you remember on another show earlier on, the, on this unit, I created dados. I created a dado at the top and a dado at the bottom. And that's for this middle section which has already got all of my draw slides fitted to it. And so today is the day that we're actually going to glue it in. So there's a couple of tricks that I'll show you as we're going along. I'll pop that down there for the moment. I have got the unit set up on some packers. This is just 19 by, by 70 or something like that. That's so I can slide my clamps under the unit on top, on top, down the side and under to pull that back on. You need, with this glue, you need, um, they say 30 minutes under clamp. Anyway, 4th of July to all of you, to all the US streamers, have a great holiday weekend. Cool. All right. So it's already set up. This thing here, this spacer, I'm going to use to keep the center up and spread a little bit. It's the same length as my center panel, but because my center panel is going two millimeters up and two millimeters down into there, when I use this in the center there, but not in the rebate or not in the dado, it's going to spread it by four millimeters. Now that is going to be very good for me because I'm not going to have glue sliming all over the place. It's going to give me that little bit of wiggle room and that's why also I have not put the back on yet because if I put the back on and then try to put this in this way, it's not going to work. It's very important when you're putting a unit together that you go through the order of operations that makes it easy for you. Uh, Clint, don't own a domino yet, but is there any reason not to lay the workpiece flat on your bench and use the domino in a vertical position with the big foot? You can do. 
The only reason it was flexing then was because when I put it down on the Stanton bench here in the front, it wasn't going down terribly deep and I just had the side clamps on. I didn't have it clamped at the base as well. I should have done that and then it would have been fine. I just find it easier if it's standing up. If something's up like this, I can sit on top and it's going to give me the exact right place for the domino to go on. If I'm doing a plunge and I've got the domino set out with the big foot on one side and the work table on the other side flat, I may not get it exactly in the right position. Just a possibility. How do you install draw slides in carcasses and drawers to make sure they align? Well, if you watch my previous video on building the roll around cart, the mobile cart, so there was a series of four that I did on the show, um, I show you that way. The other way is you can just put them straight in and, and, and mark it out where you want to. You know you want drawers. Well, I know I want drawers about 100 millimeters deep each one. So I set these out at a 100 millimeter line. So at 100 millimeters from there to there, 100 from there to there, and, and so on. It's, it's okay. Hi, Mark. <laughs> Thank you for that. So here's what we're going to do. <coughs> I'm going to put this in here and flex it this way, in the middle. Can you see that? I'm going to put the other camera on now so it makes it easier for you guys. Uh, camera three. There we go. I'll spin this around a little bit so you can see what's going on. All right. See this prop? What do you think? <coughs> so now I'm going to put some glue on the center panel, top and bottom. I should have really done this first. Look, I'm gonna knock that out of the way and we'll do the glue. Now this glue they say is stronger than wood. Well, wood is stronger than particle board, so I think I'm gonna be using the right stuff. I know which way is the top because all of my three points here are up that's the back because it hasn't got any uh, melamine edge strip on it, iron on. I'll flip it up the other way first. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this, is, this might help you as well, just thinking on the run. I'm going to put the glue in the slot, in the, in the dado first. Come on. like so, spread it out a little, put a little bit, I always put a little bit on the brush if I can. There we go. I'm not overly worried about glue spilling onto the edge of the melamine at this stage. But it's not going on too bad. Now this lathe cart I'm building with a whole heap of drawers in it because I want as much weight in it as possible. That's looking pretty good. Now, why do I want weight in the cart? Well, it stops vibration or reduces vibration big time. Now we'll put the glue on the top. The more mass you can get to secure your lathe, the better it is. Okay, so we've already got glue on it from the previous run. Spread it out, why not? I know it's going to squeeze a little bit as well. I could have put blue tape in, but honestly, the melamine isn't really going to hold on to this glue. It's not melamine glue, it's just ordinary wood glue. So I'm looking for the bond in the bottom of the dado. There we go, I'm happy with that. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna put in my prop. Come, put this down for a second. Stop trying to do 5,000 things at once. There we go. I'm gonna bring that in from this side. You can still see all right there.
drop her in there, slide her around, bring her up to position, to there, back a little before it drops. Okay, you ready? Moment of truth. Got it. Bottom. Down it goes. Beautiful. Tap that back ever so slightly. And a clamp on that. Basically straight away at the front. Beautiful. And pull it up. And a little bit of squeeze there. That's lovely. Got it. I love it. All right, now I'm not going to put a clamp on the back. I'm just going to go around the back and check that it's all pulling tightly. That's lovely. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the cameras back. Also, I guess you want the lathe cart heavy to reduce the chance of tipping too, since it has wheels. Yeah, but it's not up all that high. It's, it's not too high, Paul. Um, I'm building this so that instead of working here, I'm going to be working, I want the, the, um, the, the center of the lathe's uh, chuck to be elbow height if I can. So I'm going to be here, I'm going to be comfortable. I'm, I have more control over a chisel if it's down here rather than up here. You follow? That, that, that's my planning anyway. We'll see what happens. Um, fireworks. You like that with the spacer. There's no, it's nice and clean under there. I better get a towel and quickly clean it off. Um, some people say to use a straw, a drinking straw to clean glue off. I'm gonna give this a quick wipe under here with this. Not that it's really gonna matter because no one is ever going to see it under there. And I know that people are gonna say, oh, that's not the right attitude, Dave. That's pretty good. Gone. And that's all good. And that's all good. All right. I'm going to spin the camera around. Not the camera. I'm going to spin, spin the unit around so that you can see what I'm doing when I'm working on the back. It's one of the great things about mobile, mobile bases. This, this unit that I've got it set on is very similar to what that one's going to look like when I've finished. I'm at the moment, I'm tossing up whether I'm going to use melamine draw fronts or whether I'm going to use draw fronts the same as what I've got on this. Bring her up to about there. So that's the back. Put the camera to the side again so you can see what's going on. I'll do a quick read. Um, uh, why don't you clamp the back? Because I've got to put the back on the unit yet. Exactly what, what uh, John was saying there. Now this is the back of the unit that I created. And it has all the domino slots in it. Now you'll notice these are wider than a standard domino. They're the same thickness, so it's going to work great that way. This is going to give this unit all its strength. This is a massive brace unit. Someone said to me, man, you put a few dominoes in. Well, I did, yeah. They're every 100 millimeter. And that's because this is going to be its main structural support to stop it from what's called racking. Stop it racking over. All right. Oh, Del Powell, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, now, how's the time going? I'm going to quickly show, before I put this on, and also you'll notice I cut this after I dry assembled that. So then I could allow for the 0.4 millimeters thickness of tape on both ends. So I made this, you know, close enough to a millimeter less than the width. So when I put the iron on tape, it's come out to be almost perfect. And I'm hoping it's perfect. We'll see what happens. Uh, I forget how, if, whether it went, if it went well or not. <laughs> anyway, uh, but before I go any further, I'm going to have a quick look at some viewers things. So this is an idea. Uh, we haven't drawn that yet. As I said, this is a uh, thank you very much to Matt and Stephen for supporting us on our 
oh, what, what would you call it? Our, our stimulus thing for the local economy in the Blue Mountains. I wouldn't be doing it if I was in Victoria because Victoria is being shut down a little bit again in some regions. But we're, um, I, I have been to a few establishments over the last few weeks. And as I said, this is something I'm doing with Vicky. I'm taking her out one night a week. We're going to a place that we thought isn't doing too well and give them a bit of a boost. And people have been sponsoring us in the super chat down the side here. If you want to do that, your call. We don't hold on to it. We go out. It ends up in here. <laughs> That's one of the tragedies about doing this. But we, the reason behind it is we're trying to go out and help these companies or these businesses that have been around for a long time. Uh, Okay, Wayne, my vote is for timber draw fronts. Nice contrast. I've got the panel here waiting, so I think I will do it. Good morning, Cole. How are you? Um, everyone remembers Cole. He's got the, he's Mr. Gifkin's jig. There's links in the description box down the bottom if you want to get yourself one of those beautiful jigs. And I love it. Okay, I agree with Wayne. That looks much nicer than all melamine. Yeah. Well, the rest of the workshop is all melamine, and this this lathe cart is going to live over here. I'm going. I've got the lathe. You can see uh, right over in the corner there. The lathe is sitting there on that part of the bench on my docking near yeah, massive big thing. I don't need that anymore. Even though I've got a nice big workshop, I'm trying to economise in the space that I have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that down. I'm going to demolish that after I've got the lathe living on the lathe cart, and then the lathe cart itself will live in that corner or my other mobile docking station I'm working on over there as well. Let's have a look. WB Fine Woodworking, how are you? How are all your Basset Hounds? Uh, Paul, I vote for Timber too. Well, all right. <laughs> You've got my arm. <laughs> You've twisted my arm. I'll do it. Uh, what's next? Prefer melamine, easier to keep clean. Oh, Bob, Bob, what are you doing to me? I, I, I thought I'd already made my decision. We'll see what happens. Okay, so now we've got um, viewers, now Phil, Philip Moore has, uh, when I was talking about pocket holes and doing the screws and everything, Philip also sent some stuff into me and I haven't printed out these things, so I'm just going to talk from the memory of what, what he'd said. Philip had a pocket hole jig prior to Craig having their jigs and he's, he said, look, I use it all the time. He says it's so much easier than driving skew nails and stuff in. So he's got a couple of pocket holes in a frame underneath the, uh, I think this is a, a laundry unit that he was building. And there's another one in, in, in the unit as well. So it's just so easy. The great thing about the pocket holes is uh, the pocket hole screws, there's no vibration. So as, when I, if I'm trying to skew nail a piece of timber to another piece of timber and it's kind of freestanding, I'm smashing away. It's going to go all over the place. So with the screws, it's really easy just to screw them in. If you're concerned about them slipping, put a stop in behind of some sort, a clamp behind it. So it can't slide as you put the screw in. It's easy. Why is there a piece of four inch PVC pipe on your bench? I don't know. Where? It's not a piece of four inch PVC pipe. This is my Patreon mug. So if you become one of my patrons, and thank you so much to all my patrons, and you get it in at a certain level, I think it's the $20 level, I will send you one of these no matter where you are in the world. There you go. That's why. It's not PVC pipe. There you go. Happy? <laughs> uh, all right. Correct, Mark. Correct. Okay, so now the next thing, the next thing. So we've seen, seen what Philip sent into us, which is great. Um, easy to keep clean. Now, the next thing we've got is um, Matteo. Matteo has been building a bench or a desk for his son and all recycled timber except for the tops. So the top of that unit, melamine unit, and the top of that table. Uh, they're, I think they're the same stuff that I use from Bunnings. And the legs and the melamine have all been rescued from somewhere else. And I think that's fantastic. That's ended up on casters now. Here's another picture of it. And what a great effort. I think that looks fantastic. Hands, how are you? Four inch PVC pipe with a handle. <laughs> uh, so the next thing we've got is Matteo also sent in a picture of the Stanton bench that he purchased from me. And he's also got the K5 jig on top. 
and he says it's a winning combination. Just ask him, he'll tell you. <laughs> All right, what do we do next? I'm going to continue on with putting this together uh, because I don't want this glue to dry on me while, while I'm yabbering. So I'm going to switch over to the other camera again. All right. Now I'm only going to put glue on the dominoes. There's really not much of a use putting it on here. I could use, I've got to find the glue first, there it is. And the brush is over on the other side. I'm only going to put glue on all of these. I might put a little bit of melamine glue in between. We'll see how we go. Now this is a little bit awkward, so I'm going to put glue on the actual dominoes. Once I've got it there, I can hit it with a brush. I don't need a heap. These ones down the side, I'm going to let it run like so. The top on my roll around cart here is um, coated with Libron finishing oil. So the glue won't stick to it. I'll be able to clean it off pretty quickly if it gets on it. Otherwise, I could have put some baking paper underneath it. Now, while I'm doing this, it's a bit boring. Uh, I have put in affiliate links. I have now become an affiliate with Carbotech. So if you go in via the links that I've put down there, you'll notice also I'm an affiliate with TSO, with fantastic products. You saw me cut all of this stuff out with TSO's gear, parallel guides and the GRS-16. If you go in via these links, uh, it's not going to cost you any more, but the show will get a consideration. Basically, it's a spotter's fee. And you might think, oh, well, YouTubers are earning a truckload of money. I'll tell you something. <laughs> uh, it's lucky that I earned my money prior to doing this because the money from YouTube and all the other stuff, I am still way below the poverty line as far as income is concerned. It is not a lot of money. So as I say, I'm just, if you can help me out a little bit, I'm willing to keep on doing these kind of shows. This is a little bit tiresome, but we're nearly there. So if you've got, I'm not watching the camera, of course, because I'm doing all this, so I'm not watching the screen. But if you've got any projects on at the moment, maybe you can put comment in there and let me know what you're up to. And also, if you could be like uh, Matteo and Philip, and I've also got some more stuff from some other people. So you're going to be very interested in one of, at least one of the, uh, the other things I've got. We've got Fred Peterson sent some photos of his plane. You know, the plane that I built, the jointer plane. Well, it's actually called a trying plane. Uh, working on the same design that I created. And he's done the fence. So that's the joint of the um, joint of fence, I think you call it, or the 90 degree fence or whatever you want to call it. Oh, this is going on so well. You know, I could put a little bit of melamine glue on here as well. I don't know if it's going to really need it. You know what? I will. While, while I've got it there, why not? The glue's not going off too quickly, so it'll be okay. So this stuff here... Ah, Michael, thank you very much. This stuff here is for using on Melamine. Uh, type on, don't sponsor me at all. Uh, if you want to get theirs, get theirs. If you want to get someone else's, get theirs. I, you know, I'm happy for you to buy whatever you want. I'm not, I'm not a policeman. Uh, how am I going to do this? I think I'll put this actually on the panel. Now I need to be careful because I've worked from one side on this. And I need to line them all up. That is the correct way. All right. A little bit of melamine glue on here. They say if you want to, you can put, oh, you wouldn't you know, the end's clogged up. They say if you... <laughs> 
<laughs> this is embarrassing. Uh, I've just got to clear that out. Okay, it's working now. They say if you want to, you can hit it with a bit of 120 grit sandpaper first, and it will make it uh, just bond that little bit better. As I say, I, as much grip as I can get in this back panel to stop any racking is great. The dominoes should do it all, but it doesn't hurt. Now using melamine as a structure for these carts is fine for me, but if you've got a really crappy floor or you want to roll it over rough terrain, I would suggest using plywood because it's going to be that little bit stronger. Done. Throw that away. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. I did a dry fit, so it should, it really should work. Come on. I'm going to put a clamp down that, this end just to hold it so it doesn't decide to go wandering. Give me a second. That was brave. Good. Good, good, good. Okay. And another clamp in the center. It's just a matter of easing it on because there is a lot of points there. Imagine if I'd done all the joints tight. That it would have been impossible. It would have definitely been a situation of many tears. Oh, that's going on beautifully. That's starting to sneak on lovely. Absolutely beautiful. Now, down the bottom. That's going in. Good. Slowly sneak them up together. What do you think, guys? Got to make sure the bottom is going in as well. So we'll put a clamp under there. I've got all the clamps out ready. As I say, getting this, getting this um, all set up with the jack, with those support pieces underneath, makes a huge difference. Okay, up to there and up and in. And I'm looking down inside to make sure that the dominoes are actually taking it on. I need to squeeze that a little. Remember there was that ever so slightly piece there. This is the back that I need to pull up. So did you hear that? Did you hear it? It went click. That was the domino saying, yep, yeah, we're, we're lined up now. It was just that millimeter or so. And there she goes. Beautiful. As you're tightening it up, make sure that they don't fall off because that's embarrassing. <laughs> Especially when you've got however many people watching. So that's there. That one's pulled up nicely. And around here, I'm going to start working the far end. Okay. I'm not, as I said, I'm not getting a chance to read any of the comments because glue ups wait for no man or woman.
There she goes. Oh, this makes me very happy. Very happy. Squeezing that up. Squeezing that up. And another clamp down that side. I'm going to put some more on as well. As I say, they say to leave it for um, 30 minutes in the clamps. All right, that's great. Now, I don't need this one here anymore because all of the work is being done by the dominoes that have pulled it tight that way. So I can take that off and I can put that on the end here. Now, you don't need Bessies to do this. You can use pipe clamps. Whatever clamps you've got available is fine. And pull that up just a little bit further so it grabs right on where the domino is. That's lovely. And this one I'm going to release and pull up a little higher. Like so. Good. That's that side all done. This one here. Another clamp over there. Sometimes you need them to just... I'm starting to have to get the big ones out because I haven't got anything shorter. Um, here. That's pulled in beautifully. So you can see there's an advantage to pocket hole screws. You don't need to use the clamps. <laughs> I could have just pocket holed as well, but I thought there's people out there were saying that I was basically a heathen for, <laughs> for not using dominoes when I had the gear. And I understand what they're saying. That's fine. see how that's going around the other side I can look inside the cabinet to see how the joints pulling up oh this is lovely that's all good there still that's all good I'm going to switch the cameras so you can see from the front okay so the it's starting to look like a porcupine uh, I want another one here another one there and another one there so I think I've got three I've got two left all right Yeah, so sash clamps or bar clamps. I want to get this bottom pulled up tightly. Give me a second. Gotcha. Sometimes the Bessies do that. A little bit of mucking up, especially with the super long one. got it. Checking at the back at the front again. Good, good, good. All right. I'm going to relax this clamp and move it along a bit further just to pull it home. That's got it. And then back halfway to about there. That's good. I'll do the same with this one here. Just need to pull it in up against the glue and I'll leave that one there. Done. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Glue ups are something that can go terrific or horribly wrong. And that's why I say it's so important to do a dry assembly. On this one, I had a couple of the dominoes just nicking the edge because when I drove them in, in the tight fitting, they're leaning over ever so slightly. So I got a chisel and just just pared them off a little bit so that the shoulder wasn't pushing into the face that I was trying to do the joint with. So there you go. That's, that's, that's the next step. I'm going to also uh, put timber underneath this one as well like I did with the roll around cart. And I'm also going to put a stiffening gusset 
right the way underneath as well, which will probably be around about five inches deep, so 125 millimeters, probably three quarter inch ply. And I will create a, a, a dado as well in the base of this unit. The back, which we've just put on, there's not gonna be any sag. It cannot sag. The front, however, only has that divider that, that's in the center there across the front to stop any sag. Now, that should work pretty good, but I, there's gonna be a lot of weight in this cart, so I really want it to be as strong as possible. That center, that, that gusset towards the front, which will be far enough back away from the rotating casters. Gotta keep thinking ahead while you build these projects. But, uh, you know, I, I guess people are making comment about the clamps there, you only buy them once. Exactly right. Uh, Never thought you'd be intrigued by a clamp play-by-play. -play. It's, it's important. If you don't do it in a, in a routine, you could come undone. You might start pulling one side too tight and the other side can't swing around and, and, and make that contact. So I try and pull everything in you know, evenly so that the joints will, will work and not blow themselves to bits. Uh, giving you an idea, puppy break. <laughs> All right, now it's a quarter two. Let's have a look at at uh, at Fred's plane. Okay, remember that Fred Peterson built a hand plane exactly the same as mine, and it's finished now. And he's built the the the, the joint of fence for it as well, which keeps the plane at ninety degrees. Have a look at whoop, wrong one. Sorry, that one. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? So he's built it out of purple heart on the sides. And Fred, if you're watching, you'll be able to make comment about the rest of the timbers. And so there's from the top, we've got rock maple. And uh, he's also done the fence out of rock maple and purple heart. You've seen the plane before. He's got three rare earth magnets that, uh, hold, that hold the fence onto the body of the plane. And that's from the side. A little bit of a different lighting color there. So it's showing the purple heart as being brown. And that's from above. And Fred was also asking me whether or not to go with um, having magnets on both sides. So it could be a left or right. But the way that the plane is designed, it's designed for a right-handed approach for planing. But isn't that beautiful? Such, such a nice job. And it's very flattering to me when someone likes a job that I've done that they want to copy it as well. And I'm hoping you guys are going to want to copy this lathe cart. This is going to be a cracker. All of the tools are going to be kept in the cart. The Sorby Pro Edge is going to live on the top of this cart. This is the top that I'm going to put on it. This is just one of those panels from Bunnings. This is beach, European beach. Bunnings don't give me anything to talk about it. It's just I see them there. Look for one that hasn't got any torn plastic. And when you get it home, put it somewhere out of direct light, flat. And if you, the plastic's torn at all, take it all off, put it up on gluts like, like this is. Some people call them stickers. I call them gluts. Sit them up on that and let it get an even uh, moisture content. If you've got a concrete slab that you're gonna put it on top of, Put a bit of plastic down first before, because sometimes plastic slabs don't have any uh, moisture barrier underneath them, and they can release a lot of moisture to the underside of your panel. The top is nice dry air floating around. So that, that's just another little tip. Plastic underneath, then your gluts, then your piece of timber. All right, now we also have, don't forget, gonna tell you who won this. Uh, we also have, um, Babinga, oh, thank you so much, Fred. We also have some stuff here from, and I've got to remember, uh, where are we? Francois. Okay, so Francois, this is his workshop. It's Francois, oh, I forget his, forget his surname. I'm going to put a link in the description box down the bottom. If I haven't already done it, I'm going to put a link down there. I really do need you to have a look at this guy's workshop. Now you'll see he's got a table saw there and he's got a sliding table 
that he's done to it. Now that table saw is just a standard job site style saw. It's a Bosch, you know, so it's one of these super lightweight ones that you take to a work site and very transportable. He's pulled it apart now. He's done a full blog on how he built this. But here we go. Have a look at this. All homemade. All timber that he's painted in a very tight area. See that it's just a tiny little Bosch contractor saw. And he's made the whole assembly underneath out of particle board. The slide and everything. I think he's put some bearings on there as well. See, that's all wood. He's made all of that and painted it. And he's got some, got some steel runners on it and some steel frame underneath it. Lovely, absolutely lovely. So that's hats off to Francois. These are things you can do if you want to. All you gotta do is get out there and have a look at what's available. I do my thing, Francois has found, done his thing. And what, as I say, I'll put some links in the description box down below after the show, or if I don't do it straight away, it'll be tonight. But uh, very, very nice work. And he takes you through the whole process. They, the links might be down there already. But thank you so much to everyone who sent stuff in. And uh, shall, we, shall we, whilst that's drying, I'm not going to take it apart today. I'll, I'll take that apart tomorrow. Let's have a look at this thing here. Now, tomorrow, I'm stretching you out, aren't I? Tomorrow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these down to the store. that I work there Mondays, you know, because I enjoy hanging out. And I'm going to try it on a saw stop, a 15 amp saw stop. Now, why? I've had someone say to me that it won't work with a saw stop. So it's worked with my three horse Carbotec table saw. It's worked with my three horse air conditioner and they have a heavy pull. I don't know if there's something in the electronics that the saw stop won't allow it to work if, unless it's in a 15 amp outlet. My feeling is that it will, but I'll find out tomorrow, I'll get report back and let you know. My feeling is that the person who's tried this has used a 10 amp extension lead, plug this into the end of a 10 amp extension lead, and then plug the saw into this. Now you will get voltage drop and all sorts of things in a 10 amp extension lead, especially if they're the very tiny light gauge ones that you can get from Woolworths or, or Big W, you know, the, the ones that are economized specifically for someone to plug in beside into a PowerPoint and put a couple of electric blankets and a, tape, a bedside light or something onto and, and away they go. So I'm very curious about that. Okay, now I'll, uh, I'll read out some of the, uh, the responses that people put in. Uh, would allow me to use the 15 amp machinery in my workshop that was left to me and haven't been able to use it yet. Uh, I want to use it on the miter saw, on my welder, and they say that they will work with welders. I don't know how big a welder, but if it's a 15 amp welder, it should work fine. Uh, I use it to connect my caravan to the house when in storage. I've got nine products, have lots of 15 amp appliance, appliances and only one 15 amp outlet. Would use for my inverter welder. Two machines that are rated 15 amp uh, currently very carefully hook them up <laughs> to a normal PowerPoint. Um, that when starting, okay, uh, I use 15 amp for the caravan and my shed and TIG welders. Um, indoors where space is tight, our men's shed has three machines that use 15 amp plugs so it would help to move a machine to a different position. Uh, I've got a 15 amp vacuum cleaner. Uh, use one on my table saw and the transit fan I'm converting. Uh, two 15 amp plugs in my shop. Um, let me enable me to get my heavy duty bandsaw. Well, that's something. I bought the two horse. 
I bought the two horse uh, bandsaw because I didn't have another 15 amp outlet in here. So there you go. That's that. If I had, if I knew that this would work with a three horse bandsaw, I would have bought the next one up because it wasn't that much more expensive to buy the stronger motor. And then for resaw, it works beautifully. Oh, Jeff, thank you very much. As I say, if you if you want to do a super chat chat or a sticker like that, we're trying to stimulate the local economy and and you know get some of these restaurants and motels, hotels I should say, going again. And that's what we're using this, this super chat money for. It's, it's costing me a lot more than what that super chat's coming in at, but that's why we're doing it. And we'll go, Vicky and I'll go out again this week. And it's also a good time for us to leave the dog at home so she can acclimatize to get used to the house on her own because when we start doing the wood shows again, she's gonna be here on her own. So there you go, you're helping the dog out. Um, uh, look, there's a heap more here, but the winner, the winner is Brian Luckins, L-U-C-K-I-N-S. I, I think it's Luckins, it could be Lukens, but I think it's Luckins. Brian, congratulations. I will get in touch with uh, Amphibian and ask them to send one of these out to you. So I will be sending you an email, and if you can respond by giving me your address and a phone number. The phone number is basically for the courier. I don't want to start ringing you up and annoying you. <laughs> it's, it's for the couriers. They like to have a phone number as well, just in case they can't locate you. They will give you a call and say, Brian, we've, we've got this uh, parcel from Amphibian and where do you want me to put it if you're not home? All that kind of stuff. So thank you very much for everyone, for just everything. And this is another project that I'm gonna keep going with Good on you, Brian. Excellent, excellent. I hope you can put it to good use. Brian made comment that he's got an RV uh, recreational vehicle, or, you know, a big van, whatever, and he's going to use it with that. That'll be fantastic for you. Um, yeah, so I'm going to keep going with this project. And I've made all the drawers, as I say, so I'm going to possibly this week make the top. And I want to put handles in the top as well, so when I, I can push it inwards and outwards, uh, like I've done with this one. And, 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 and um, do, we'll do the draw fronts. So I might have to duck down to Bunnings and buy some, some more of that stuff. Or I'll use the uh, Melamon. I, I don't know. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? Um, I don't know what you're talking about there, Matthew. Uh, I, th I think that's going to be better. What We've got a couple of minutes to go. Two minutes to 12. I have people coming for lunch today, so I can't do the Zoom meeting after this show. I think I've warned everyone on Patreon that that's the way it's going. Um, if you want to support me on Patreon, that's fantastic. There will be a link in the description box down below. All the tiers are shown there. You might notice that the tiers don't really show anything apart from different levels. Now, that the reason being, I'm looking at general support only. If a $20 level, I will send you a mug out that's a Patreon mug like this. And that, that's, that's it. We do have Zoom meetings and you can ask me questions during the meetings as well if you want to. All depends on how much you want to support me by. As I say, uh, this, <laughs> this is not a, a venture that's, uh, that gives me a lot of money. It's, it's something that keeps me going. That's all. All right. Excellent. Thanks everyone for watching. I shall go down to this part here. Lucky old Brian. These things, I'll report back, see how they go. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I shall see you next week. Oh, I'm not going to do the Wednesday shows anymore. The heads up, no Wednesday show. I, it's just too much for me in the middle of the week. And I, there we go. All right, look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I shall see you next Sunday. Bye.